Coming up on this retrospective episode of Outlook TV. Manspread in Montreal. The People's Prom 20th. Vancouver's next drag superstar. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Ali, and you're watching Outlook TV, the queer magazine's new show that brings you the stories that matter the most, from coast, well, to the other coast. And then the other coast. <laughs> On this retrospective episode, we're going to kick it off with one of your stories, Ali. That's right. Charlie Deville has been manspreading all over Montreal Pride 2019. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of manspreading myself this year. Montreal Pride is putting on a show called Manspread that only features drag kings. We're talking with Charlie DeVille, one of the artists performing here tonight. Manspread, which is a show that I produce every month. It's the only uh, drag king show that's monthly in Quebec, the whole province. So the scene here is still young. I've been doing the show for about a year, but the way that the scene has grown in such a short amount of time is unbelievable and it makes me so happy. <laughs> I really wanted to kind of showcase our local drag king scene. So there was a lot of local talents, Rock Biao, Will Charmer, Slick Hardwood, um, just kind of, you know, the ones who are holding it down all throughout the year. And it's just nice to showcase like the local king talent that we have here because it's, it's amazing. Can you tell us a bit about who Charlie is? Charlie is a deadbeat dad by day, and by night he is a question mark. He's like, you, you're never really sure who he's gonna be. I'm never really sure who he's gonna be. Um, yeah, he's an adventure. I started drag for a drag king competition called King of Kings. That was my first kind of solo performance, and I won that competition. Um, so I was like, okay, I think I'm going to try to like do what I can with this title. And I took the crown and I ran with it. I also do a Justin Bieber impersonation. That's kind of my main thing. And I'm giving you peak Bieber. I'm giving you like purpose world tour Bieber. So it's like a Bieber show for a fraction of the price. Oh, how good was that fucking act? Oh my God. I have been a fan of like the queer nightlife scene in Montreal for a long time. So I've seen a lot of people perform and Montreal has a wealth of artists and performers. Um, so it's really not hard to get a totally different selection every time. I have like too many to choose from, but it's great. And like people really want to be in my show and I think they really kind of are behind the message, which is that you can present yourself however you want, you can have whatever body and you can be whatever gender and you can still do drag. I feel like this year Montreal Pride has done put in more of an effort than ever before to include uh, different styles of drag, different types of performers. The scene here is really vibrant, but it's not necessarily in the village that we see that. So there is talent all over the city, but it's hard to feel included, I guess, when you're not part of the main scene. But I think they were trying to make an effort to bring in the more weird queer performers in because we're just as much a part of the community as anybody else. From the Casido tent here at Parc des Faubourgs, Montreal, this is Ollie for Outlook TV. Next up in our Wayback Machine, we're going to go to the 20th People's Prom. And Rebecca, if it wasn't for COVID, I would ask you out for prom. <gasps> oh, and I'd say yes. Aww. What's up, Canada? Thank you for watching Outlook TV. My name is Lira Wan, and I'm here in beautiful British Columbia at the 20th anniversary of the People's Prom on Valentine's Day. The People's Prom started 20 years ago uh, as a fundraiser to get some folks from BC to Montreal to protest the FTAA there. And the first event was so successful that we just continued year after year. We realized that there was really an appetite in this city for a really inclusive event where people really connect with one another and try to help other people out. Like This is very much about donating back to the community, connecting with other people. If you can describe the people's prom with one word, what would that word be? Special, I guess. Why? Yeah, why special? Mm -hmm. um, just because I don't think 
there is anything like it, especially in Vancouver. I mean, there's like queer events and, you know, like sex positive events and lots of different things, but there's very few places that kind of bring it all together and um, still have that like kind of kitschy, campy, um, retro vibe and like everybody feels welcome here and I think that there's a lot of like queer spaces that people feel comfortable in but like we can bring our um, straight friends to this event we can bring people from all different walks of life to this and they feel like they belong and I think that that's really important and not really found a lot of other places. The People's Prom is a prom you never had in high school. It's a radical, community oriented, anti-capitalist, gender bending, all inclusive, slow dancing, queer, big dress wearing, good time. What does that mean, Tasha? Uh, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, primarily, it is uh, a statement against the consumer corporatization heteronormative Valentine's Day experience that a lot of people feel is very forced down their throat. You don't have to have a date to come to the People's Prom. You can come and be single and meet people. We've had multiple people, actually, that have met their long-term partners at prom. Um, but we want it to be a very inclusive event. So this year we tried to like bring everything to the table that we could. Um, we normally have a professional photo booth which is just around the corner here. This was kind of, and this was my like baby project. Um, I wanted to do some kind of like cheers to 20 years, like showcase the people who've been, the people who started this, photos, like um, main photos that we like really loved from all the years that have come and gone um, and bring like little pieces of it into this year. Um, so we tried to drop little like things around that like we had a zine from 2005 that someone like recopied um, and we just wanted to bring like pieces of the previous years to this year along with our traditional things that we always have. It's not a socially siloed place in the way that a lot of queer and straight events are. So you come here and it doesn't feel like there's a predominant orientation that's represented. Um, and it almost in that way feels very futuristic. It's almost like a post post identity politics kind of space where like it legitimately doesn't matter what your orientation is, who you love, everyone is welcome here, all expressions are welcome here, and it's wonderful to feel that you just come as you are and are celebrated and connect with people and give back to the community. And from the 20th anniversary of the People's Prom in Vancouver, BC, thank you for watching Outlook TV. We're going to have to take a little break now. And if you can't get enough of Outlook TV, well, during the break, you can watch some of our past stories on YouTube. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Rebecca, I heard that Cher is giving away awards. It's not Cher like Sonny and Cher Cher. I mean, don't be disappointed. It's still a fabulous group that's giving out fabulous awards. We're with Cher Vancouver and the January Marie Lapousse Leadership Award for Youth. Let's talk to Cher Vancouver and find out who the winners are for the awards for 2019. Well, we wanted to create a legacy for January Marie Lapousse after she was uh, tragically taken from us. And we wanted to remember her as the wonderful social coordinator that she was. And, you know, I felt, well, she was doing great work for youth in our group. Why not celebrate other youth? So we are looking for people between 16 and 30 who are, doing, who are showing involvement, commitment, and leadership in the queer community. So we had an application from India, Newfoundland, Ontario, and all over Metro Vancouver. Well, with Share Vancouver, I've been a longtime supporter uh, of Share Vancouver's mandate. And at Diversity, again, as we support marginalized newcomers, part and parcel of that is supporting our marginalized uh, newcomer uh, migrants that identify as LGBTQ+. Winning a $400 prize is Jackson Y. Chung Se. What do you plan on doing with the award and the money? Yeah, I'm just so grateful to be given this opportunity and to be here among so many am amazing winners and, and uh, award recipients and community members. I'm just going to use the money to continue this advocacy that I'm doing within the LGBTQ community. Winning a $600 prize is Andy Holmes. 
Is that helping with your education? Absolutely. So um, I'm very thankful that the financial component of the award definitely goes towards my research um, on, on the Bruce MacArthur case in Toronto. Because I'm currently doing research about the Bruce MacArthur serial killer case in Toronto, in which that was a very necropolitical case. A prize of $1,000 is normalized. And you are the grand winner of the uh, Share of Vancouver Youth Awards. What do you plan on doing with the award and the money associated with it? I will put it on the side because I am part of the first trans initiative in the Middle East and North Africa. So I would like to, um, to dedicate this money for a research study. It's not a lot, but it still it helps a lot with, with the work that we want to do. And of course I will share the news with everyone I know, with my trans folks and with my tribe with the people that I worked with before. Uh, tell us a little bit about your application. I shared my, the work that I was doing with the trans community in, the, in Lebanon, in the Middle East and North Africa. I shared what I was doing. I talked a lot about the advocacy, the online advocacy that we were doing on social media, on radio stations and TV stations. Uh, because, you know, being gay in Lebanon or trans is illegal. So it's very important if you put yourself out there. Maybe the work that we're doing is minimal to be compared to other countries, but it's, it's very impactful in Lebanon and in, in the region there. Congratulations to all the winners. This is Sister Fancy Pants, Miss Gay Vancouver for Outlook TV at Diverse City in Surrey, BC. In case you need to hear this again, it's mental health in COVID times. That's right, Alberta's covered a story with members from him last year. We at Outlook TV have been wondering whether the coronavirus has had some particular mental health effects on members of the gay community. We're at the offices of the Health Initiative for Men, uh, right here in the heart of the West End on Davie Street, to uh, gain some more information about this issue. Here at HIM, we have uh, seen an increase in applications for counseling, particularly in the months of May uh, and June. In um, March and April, we did not see any increase, and then in the mid of May, it just grew exponentially. We think it's related to um, the effects of the pandemic on queer men and how it's affecting their lives. Main issues that we receive uh, from clients in their applications, and that's anxiety, depression, and loneliness. We also received reports from our community engagement team that older folks um, are feeling more isolated and more lonely a lot of times uh, because of the lack of access to certain technologies. Also, we have um, received reports from younger um, folks who, who may not have access to privacy at all in their spaces. We have received um, reports of folks who are less out who have been having to live with their families, uh, who may not be aware that they're queer, and that creating a lot of distress for them for not being able to have the freedom to connect with community or with services from their homes. A lot of what we hear in terms of the effect of the pandemic is people feeling hopeless, people feeling that things will never gonna be as they were. I think a, a process of mourning or loss of the previous spaces, previous uh, opportunities to connect with other people. Take Time for Your Mind is our mental health portal. It's signed for uh, queer men and queer men's uh, needs. We have there uh, resources for queer men who want to learn a bit more about maybe some of the things they're experiencing, maybe if they're experiencing anxiety or if they're experiencing anger or different issues. Outness.ca is... Um, Him's new campaign that is called Outside In. It's basically a campaign to visibilize and include um, queer folks who may have different degrees of outness in their lives. Um, we realize that a lot of uh, folks are not out, for example, to their families and that that has impacted their ability to connect with services and community. We are offering not only remote counseling to work with counselors um, via phone or, or uh, video, but we actually have allowed in-person counseling following COVID-19 prevention protocols at our Davie Health Center for now. We'd like to thank Alvaro at the Health Initiative for Men for all his valuable information that he has shared with us. This is Albertus Roskam for Outlook TV. Let's head over to Calgary now and check out Twisted Elements. 
like many other bars and establishments around Canada, they had to adapt to the COVID realities. Oh, haven't we all? Yeah. Uh, well, we had to close our doors for a few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it left a lot of the community feeling isolated and stuck in their homes as with everyone else. And we didn't really have a safe space to go. That's a pledge on your pancakes makes coronavirus pass. Coronavirus pass if it gives you gas. Since COVID hit, it's been really difficult for performers to find stages to perform at. So, you know, a lot of us kind of went online where we could and did what we could that way. Um, but we were very thankful that Twisted actually had been able to convert themselves to a restaurant and bring us back in. So during COVID, it was tough. It was tough to find, for a lot of us professional performers, to actually find work to keep us sustained throughout. So it was really difficult in the beginning. But we seemed to switch and make it work, which was really good. Twisted Elements has been here for 16 years. Uh, they had a kitchen the first two years, and it didn't work out that well the first time. They shut it down, and for 14 years, the kitchen turned into a drag room of desolation. Uh, now we've cleaned it up, we worked on it, we buffed out the kinks, and it is nice working kitchen. Uh, we had a little um, birthday party here that we had some food at that I made. Um, well, it was just a club still. Uh, and then they asked me if I was interested to come on fully and make a menu and reopen the kitchen after that because they just fell in love with my cooking, I guess, <laughs> and my bright personality. <laughs> there's no, there's no vaccine. We currently have shows five nights a week. We're working on filling up those other two nights a week. We also have some all ages shows uh, focused around brunch time on Saturdays and then an adult brunch on Sundays. <laughs> We're currently bringing in rotating uh, guests from Canada's Drag Race. So this week we had Scarlet Bobo, uh, and over the past few weeks we've had Priyanka, Boa, Ilona. We do an all ages brunch every Saturday. It's, this is only our second one, we just started doing it. We have so many all age performers in town, we figured they needed a venue. Um, before the pandemic we had them going once a month. And now we're going to have them going once a week because we have so many youth performers out there. Try and get them on a stage. It actually makes me get really emotional uh, when we talk about like the young drag performers, just because like the support that you see in their parents' eyes and like the love that you see, it's just like that's what's going to change this world. Um, it's going to make this such a better place uh, for everyone to live in. It's been a complete 180, and it's really opened our eyes to the huge amount of support that we have from uh, the queer community in Calgary, any community really in Calgary. Um, we're not, we're, we're, we're able to offer live, perform, uh, live performances, uh, live entertainment um, that's not really available right now in the world, and we do it safely, we do it correct, and we do it with a lot of love. I think this pub restaurant format will continue long term, and as normalcy uh, comes back and we are allowed to evolve into a nightclub again, I think that that will be limited to a few nights a week and this will be our main format. It's that time again, time for a break. And during that break, you can head on over to Instagram and follow Outlook TV. And like, 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 like. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Did you know that Vancouver has a strong gay history? Oh, you bet we do. Vancouver Pride is best known for the Vancouver Pride Parade and Festival, which have been celebrated for over 40 years. A history of Vancouver Pride and LGBTQ documentary highlights some of the moments along the way. Join us as we find out more.
The first Canadian law condemning homosexuality came into force in 1841. Well, it starts back in the 1800s, uh, back when it was illegal to be gay and you were, you were put to death. That didn't last very long in Canada, but uh, and then you were jailed up until Ted North uh, stood on the steps of the courthouse in a dress. That's what started a lot of the movement. There was a lot of stuff going on before that, but that was kind of a, one of the key points of what happened. Then there was also uh, Rupert Everett, who was the uh, last person to be jailed for being gay uh, in the Northwest Territories. Uh, we actually looked at that. We talked about that in the documentary. So we, shot, we went through the timeline, and then, of course, we obviously went through as it had progressed all the way up to uh, current today. There's still an awful lot to do. Even 50 years later, there's a lot. So some of the big milestones that, that hit for Vancouver Pride was Justin Trudeau being one of the first, you know, sitting prime minister to, to march in the parade. That's pretty incredible. Um, even just to see, you know, people of color joining the parade, um, you know, the... the um, South Asian, first South Asian float adjoining, um, and, and people finding their voices. That was, those are big things that have happened. I uh, worked at Rogers in community television. Um, basically, I went to my boss and said, well, you know, this parade needs to be covered. So she agreed, and we ended up covering the parade with a four-camera mobile, and we did it for four years. And then over the years, things, you know, we, we, they stopped covering it, uh, Shaw Swap Systems, and Shaw, Shaw did it for one year, and then they stopped covering it. When they stopped covering it, I started covering it with two cameras myself. So I've been covering the parade since 96, so I had all this footage of the parade. I put together a thing called 30 Years of Pride, stuck it up on YouTube, and it was just basically music to all the different years, like visuals from the different years of the pride. Uh, then uh, this year, uh, when everything was virtual, we talked to the Pride Society about the idea of doing something a little more extensive, and that's when we started looking at actually creating an official documentary with, um, with all the various elements of the documentary, like interviews and, and going back and doing a timeline. And, and then I, in 1991, I decided I would attend because I came out in that year. Watching the parade, I saw a sea of whiteness, a sea of maleness, and I felt unrepresented. To be queer, to me, to be LGBTQ, meant to be white because that's the only image of queerness we ever saw. Marching in it was my way of interrupting the parade more than being included. One of the things we struggled with was the fact that when Pride started, it was a very white male kind of thing happening. And uh, so that's where a lot of our roots are. And even actually at the time when the parade was happening, there was already a lesbian march prior to that. So then it became, it was so, like I said, a very white thing. So as we progressed, one of the things I found out in doing the documentary that there was a lot of stuff of people of color happening back then. Uh, like Fatima uh, in 1990, she, she organized, she got involved with a, a float for people of color and the First Nations. So that's all in the documentary. You actually can see a lot of those elements coming into play. Uh, same with Alex out in, uh, that uh, is involved with Cher. It's 2020, Pride is evolving, we're all still listening, and the future is an unwritten book. It's a snapshot of, the, of Pride, and, and uh, it would take a huge documentary. But the other side of it, it is, aside from a snapshot, it's an ongoing pro process. And so I think in future years, we might be able to add on to it or create a second version of it so we can add on to what's happening in Pride and the direction Pride's happening in Vancouver uh, and the direction LGBT community is going, because it is still evolving. If you haven't seen the doc, there's a couple spots you can go. Out TV Go um, is, so that's uh, Out TV's streaming service. They have it up on there. And then I believe um, Pride has now officially launched it on their YouTube uh, channel as well, so you can watch it there. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt in historic Davie Village in Vancouver. Just before the world fell apart, we got to crown Vancouver's next drag superstar. And apparently Emily was there to see the crowning itself. Ah, the before times. Hello viewers, it is that time of year again. Outlook TV is here at Celebrities in the House to join the search for Vancouver's next top drag superstar. So follow me, don't get lost, and keep up. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of new talent that you may not have seen before. Um, we have one contestant that came all the way from Maple Ridge to compete in tonight's competition. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really it's going to be a great show, and you're going to see lots of new talent and, and fresh faces that have been 
taken through the ringer over the last month. It's been 25 years, and today actually marks my last event that I'm going to do. I'm hanging up Cruzy T's towel um, and getting ready to retire. Um, it's been an honor to produce events on Davie Street and for the Vancouver's community for 25 years. It was it was giving a chance for entertainers and singers and performers to to be on stage. Just off the top of my head, some of our queens from Vancouver's Next Direct Superstar have won, been crowned, and now one of them has their own TV show in Australia. It is a big honor for me to like represent the underrepresented minority, and that's like something I'm really proud that I'm doing. I'm proud of myself. I'm really blessed to be able to have this opportunity. <laughs> One, emotion. Two, drama. Three, um, a story. The most incredible journey. It has pushed me to lengths that I didn't know that I could go to. It has been very intense. It was stressful, but we were all like a unit and a family together. I have been able to challenge myself in ways that I haven't been able to before and have met some really amazing people and have learned so much from each of the contestants. You can expect glamour, you can expect a lot of bigger hair, you can also expect me to probably take a Ventolin at the end of the performance. <laughs> My confidence has grown so, so much, and the community has helped me, basically has carried me through this competition. And in three words, what can we expect from you tonight? Um, Asian, heritage, pride. <laughs> to be spinning out sparkles for the next 10 years. I'm Emily Ann Fraser, you're watching Outlook TV Vancouver. That's all the time we have for this retrospective episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back very soon with another one. And in the meantime, you can follow us on all of the social media and send us an email if you would like to volunteer with us. We're so much fun. We are. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Ollie. Stay, Stay safe, safe Canada. Canada.